Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the uh, relationship between Kc and Kp. So let's do a little review. Remember, your equilibrium constant is a general description of the equilibrium condition. So if you had a reaction where A and B is in equilibrium with C and D, uh, your equilibrium constant using concentrations would be the concentration of C to the power C times the concentration of D to the power D over the concentration of A to the A times the concentration of B to the B. Um, remember, in your equilibrium constant, the only phases that can be in your equilibrium constant are gaseous and aqueous phases. So that means, um, in this case, since this is our equilibrium constant, uh, A, B, C, and D are all either gaseous or aqueous. If you had a reaction where all your reactants and products are uh, gases, you could talk about your Kp. Your Kp is your equilibrium constant using partial pressures. So if A, B, C, and D were all gases, your Kp would be the partial pressure of C to the power C times the partial pressure of D to the power D over the partial pressure of A to the A, partial pressure of B to the B. Um, now let's say you had a reaction where all A, B, C, and D were gases, and you wrote the Kc for that reaction and the Kp for that reaction. You evaluated Kc, you evaluated Kp. Would Kc and Kp necessarily be the same? Um, they would not. In fact, there's a relationship between Kc and Kp. So if you had a reaction where A and B is in equilibrium with C and D, and remember again, uh, all A, B, C, and D are gases, your Kp would equal your Kc times RT to the delta N. Your R is your gas constant, T is your temperature in Kelvin, and delta N is the sum of your uh, product coefficients, so C and D, uh, minus the uh, sum of your reactant uh, coefficient, so A plus B. So it's one thing to know the equation, and it's another thing to know where this equation comes from. So what is the derivation of this equation? That's what we're going to be spending the rest of the video talking about. So we have the, our same equation, um, and so our Kp would be your partial pressures, and your Kc would be your uh, concentrations. We're trying to get from K, uh, we're trying to find the relationship between Kp and Kc, so what we're essentially trying to find is how do we get from the partial pressure to the concentration? Since we're talking about gases, one thing that we can use is our ideal gas law. And your ideal gas law tells you that PV equals nRT. Your pressure times your volume is equal to the number of moles times R times T. Now when we leave it in terms of this, this, is, this kind of implies that we're talking about the entire uh, the all, all the gases in your reaction. If we want to talk about just a particular gas, we could just put uh, Px times V is equal to Nx times Rt. So it's the pressure of that gas and the number of moles of that gas. Uh, v stays the same because uh, we're talking about a single gas, but we're not really changing the volume of the entire container. So we can say that our partial pressure of X is equal to the number of moles of X times Rt over V. Now, we're not really there yet uh, in terms of where we want to be. We want to find a relationship between your partial pressure and your concentration. But we're really close. What we have so far is uh, really close. And that's because the concentration is in terms of molarity. Molarity is the number of moles of a gas over the volume uh, that gas occupies. And so that's your number of moles over your volume. So that Nx over V here just represents the concentration of x. So our final relationship is that the uh, partial pressure of some gas x is equal to the concentration of that gas times rt. And we can use that by plugging it back into our initial kp expression. So this is what we have for kp and if we uh, replaced all those partial pressures with this relationship that we found here we would have this. Um, so the concentration of c rt to the c DRT uh, to the D over ART or to the A, BRT to the B. Um, what we can do now is we can kind of separate the two. So we can distribute the exponents and separate them based on the concentrations and all that RT stuff. And we can simplify all that RT stuff to RT to the C plus D minus A plus B. Remember, since we have just RT and we're multiplying uh, these two exponents, well, what, what happens is that the exponents get uh, added up. These are just your exponent rules, so whenever you multiply exponents, you add them, 
and when you divide the exponents you end up subtracting them um, so RT's, uh, that all, all that RT stuff simplifies to this. Now, this thing right here should be a little familiar. That concentration, all that concentration stuff, that's familiar because your KC is exactly that. It's the concentration of C to the C, D to the D, over A to the A, B to the B. So what we can do is we can replace that entire expression with KC. So what we have uh, so far is that KP is equal to KC, times RT to the C plus D minus A plus B. And uh, at this point, we basically have the uh, final equation. So KP is equal to KC times RT to the delta N, where delta N is the sum of your product uh, coefficients minus the sum of your reactant coefficients. And we use delta N just to make things a little neater. Um, uh, but yeah, that's how you derive the relationship between Kc and Kp. That's how you derive that equation. I hope this gives you a bit more uh, intuitive understanding behind the difference between your equilibrium constant using partial pressures and the equilibrium constant using concentrations. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Uh, consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I hope to see you later. Thank you.